What's up, vinyl community, YouTube world, and everybody that decided to watch this video. Today is Sunday, uh, May 29th, day before uh, Memorial Day. So, have a, hope everyone's gonna have a great Memorial Day. Uh, enjoy the time uh, for barbecues and all that good stuff. Um, let's remember what more Memorial Day is really about, though. It's about those that uh, sacrificed uh, so much for us and the armed forces uh, for our freedoms and all that kind of stuff. But that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to talk about Memorial Day. I am here to talk about my absolute favorite album of all time. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Um, and that is Eric Clapton Unplugged. Uh, last Monday uh, in the mail, I got something that I was very surprised to get so quickly, but I got this. Oh my gosh, how excited was I? This is my first ever Mobile Fidelity record period. It's my first ever uh, one step, obviously. But it's just, I mean, it's my first mo mobile Fidelity. I've never gotten one, I, but I figured when I saw that this was coming out, I'm like, I gotta get this one. This is this is my absolute favorite album of all time. It's gonna sound amazing, I know it is. And I was super excited about it. And it came in the mail on Monday. Uh, you know, uh, they only did 10,000 of these. Um, and I have number 875, which I think is gonna cool. It's under 1,000, so pretty neat. But I want to talk about this record. Um, I have two pressings of it. I have this one, and I have this. This is an original German pressing um, on the Reprise label. Um, like, almost near mint, honestly. Um, well, I never noticed that before. But anyway, almost near mint. The, the vinyl is super clean, sounds great. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this uh, about the record, and, I, and I'm going to talk about this album a little bit first because, like I said, it's my favorite album of all time. Um, it came out, well, it was recorded in January of 92. It was released in um, August of 92. It was done for the MTV Unplugged series, which, as you know, um, was huge back in the early 90s especially. Um, <clears throat> it uh, was done in England. Uh, in front of a very small crowd um, and uh, it honestly is the most successful of all the MTV Unplugs. Um, it sold 26 million copies uh, which is a lot um, but 26 million copies uh, one of the most successful live albums of all time actually believe it or not um, and like I said the most successful MTV Unplugged for me, it is my favorite album. It's also my favorite MTV Unplugged, obviously. I do love uh, the Nirvana Unplugged, probably my second favorite. And third would either be Alice in Chains or Pearl Jam. Uh, but there have been a lot of great Unplugs over the years. But anyway, um, back to the album. So came out in 92. It, uh, <clears throat> like I said, it was done over, I think, two days. I'm not positive on that one. Uh, but the tracks that you hear on it aren't all the tracks that he played at the show. There were some unreleased tracks, which they later released in the 25th anniversary edition that came out five years ago. By the way, it's the 30th anniversary of this album, which is why I think Mobile Fidelity put this thing out this year, is that they knew, you know, um, it was the anniversary of it. So um, there were some tracks that they did play that did not make it on the actual album itself. Or on the show, I don't think. Um, I haven't seen the show in a long, long time. But um, they were tracks that he later recorded for his album, uh, The Pilgrim, which is a great album, by the way. Um, but uh, it had early versions of Circus um, and My Father's Eyes. And when you listen to it, it sounds, I mean, it doesn't really sound a whole lot like the actual stu um, album version of My, My Father's Eyes. Um, and then the other song was Worry, uh, Worry Man Blues. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> the last track that is on it, well, hold on, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, when it was released in, uh, the, for the 25th anniversary on uh, CD and DVD, they released the whole show and there was uh, recordings that 
didn't make it on to the actual show of My Father's Eyes, Worry Man Blues, um, and, uh, and Circus. But um, the album was not released on vinyl in the U.S. And when, when it first came out. Um, it was only released on cassette tape and CD, uh, but it was released on vinyl, obviously, because I have a copy, and like other countries. And like I said, this is the German pressing. Um, like I said, it sounds great. Love it. I got it for a steal too, by the way. Originals of this are not cheap. I got this for like, I think less than 30 bucks. And like I said, it was almost near mint. So super, I was super excited about that. But this was actually the first ever album I bought with my own money on cassette tape. Um, and I wore that thing out. Um, actually, I didn't really, but I listened to it a lot. Um, listen to it on my boombox. Kids, if you don't know what a boombox is, look it up. <laughs> listen to it on my Walkman. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, but I listened to it like crazy. Um, loved it over, I, I mean, oh, I play it over and over again. I know every song like the back of my hand almost. Um, <clears throat> actually I remember I had a car one time that had a cassette player and this was after I had a, a few different cars that had CD players but I had this one that had a cassette player but I didn't have any cassettes and somehow I found that cassette somewhere in my house and that just stayed in that tape deck the entire time I had that vehicle just played it over and over again but I you know I did buy it on CD later on and then of course when I started getting into vinyl um, I look for a copy like I said they didn't have any US pressings and they only had uh, and I was able to get this German pressing which is great but one thing that's interesting the um, other countries versions of the of the record don't have one track on it it's missing rolling and tumbling which come to find out uh, when they were doing the show making the show you know they'd have to do other takes of stuff you know like they'd stop and say hey we need to do another take of uh Layla or another take of San Francisco Blues um and so you know that they were doing all these takes well while the cameras weren't rolling Clapton just kind of started this impromptu version of rolling and tumbling and the and the whole band just started not rehearsed nothing and that was later added on to the album actually um like the the director of the show said start filming and so that's why when you listen to it it comes in pretty much halfway through the song almost because it was already going on and the director was like we need to get this we need to get this and that's why at the very end you hear Clapton say did you get that because he was really happy with it it turned out great he hadn't played that song live uh since he had been in cream which is kind of a big deal so great muddy water song uh just a classic but um, yeah, so that version or that song was not on any of the uh, other records. It was only on the CD and the cassettes and all that. So I thought I always thought that was interesting. Luckily enough, when the album came out in 2012 on vinyl, um, which I've heard a lot of people talk about that, um, it it was on that, and of course it's on this as well. So anyway, um, more about the the album. Uh, that in 1993, Eric Clapton won six Grammys. Three were for the actual album itself, and then three were for the song Tears in Heaven, which is on the album. But it was for the studio version that was on the uh, soundtrack for the movie Rush. Now, for those of you that don't know about the song Tears in Heaven, which I think most people do, it's a song that Clapton wrote about his son, his son Connor that had died the year before, um, March of 91. Uh, you know, it was a terrible, tragic story. He fell out of a New York uh, hotel building or, or just a, a building uh, from the 53rd floor. Tragic. Um, Clapton kind of went into solitude mode for a while um, and I guess put himself into music and this song is one of the things that came out of it which it's it's one of my all-time favorite songs. It's one of my wife's all-time favorite songs. She gets teary-eyed every single time she hears it but just to tell a story real fast, which this video is already going longer than I was expecting, but to tell a story about it real fast. Um, me and my wife, we've been married for almost six years. Um, and early on in our marriage, uh, she got pregnant. And we were really excited because 
for those of you that don't know, I have two older stepdaughters. And so we wanted to have one together to kind of complete our family. And uh, so my wife was pregnant and we were really excited about it. Well, she started having some, some problems in the pregnancy pretty early on. And uh, she had a miscarriage, which anyone that's ever had a miscarriage, I, you know, it's one of the most difficult things you'll, you'll ever go through. For a husband, it's super difficult because you, you can't do anything to ease any of the pain that your wife is going through. Um, you know, just seeing her either in physical pain or just emotional pain from this, knowing that she couldn't do anything to save this pregnancy. Um, it was very hard for her. I, I mean, she had some complications afterwards. It was very, very difficult. And it's something we don't talk about a whole lot, but it, it's something that should be talked about because it's a very serious thing that happens to tons of women all over the world. Um, and, you know, some people can't deal with it. You know, luckily enough, I, you know, we had a very good support system from family and friends, um, and, and, and we supported each other through it too. But um, that song, uh, even though it's about the loss of Eric Clapton's son, and you know, he was only four and all that stuff, it's really just about loss in general. And, you know, the fact that we never met this child that we were gonna have together, you know, thinking about the lyrics, you know, would you know my name if I saw you in heaven? Man, I'm starting to get a little emotional, I'm sorry. Um, it really resonates with you, you know, knowing that we may not have seen the child that we were going to have together in person, but in the next life, and I'm not going to get all religious and stuff on you, but in the next life, you know, we're going to. And just the words from the song and it's just so beautiful and very touching and moving and she wouldn't listen to the song for a little while after um, this happened in our life uh, she listens to it now but she still gets emotional and I, I kind of it just it like a warmth almost comes over me every time I hear that song um, so yeah I'm sorry wow that was uh, <laughs> was not expecting all that um Anyway, back to the album, though, sorry. Uh, you know, this album had so many big things on it, though. I mean, because that was also the first time he'd ever uh, performed Tears in Heaven in live uh, and in front of people, I believe. And, um, you know, then it had other songs on it, which have become staples. Uh, you know, his version of Layla, which no one had heard that version before. It was something completely new. And if you listen to the record, you know, he says, see if you can spot this one, and he starts it. Um, it's funny to watch his reaction when he's playing it because the, the crowd really gets into it at first. He's like, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. I, it, I hope this is good. Um, and so Layla, you know, huge. Um, he, I know that Clapton will perform it uh, both for, like both ways, the acoustic and electric version at a lot of his shows now because it's that popular. Um, you know, and then there's tons of blues classics, Before You Accuse Me, um, nobody knows you when you're down and out. Uh, Malted Milk, San Francisco Bay Blues, um, Hey Hey. I mean, Alberta. Just tons of. I mean, to me, every song on here is is great. It's. A, I mean, like I said, I just I love it to death. Now, uh, and for those of you that don't know, yes, I'm biased. Eric Clapton is my all time favorite gu guitar player. Um, I I love everything he does. He's he's just my favorite. Um, but this album, like I said, as a young kid, when I bought this tape, which I was so excited about, and just playing it over and over again, um, you know, digging deep into every song, the guitar, wanting to learn how to play every song on that album, which, by the way, not the easiest songs to play, um, some of them. I mean, he plays a classical guitar with nylon strings, he plays a regular, and then he plays a, a dobro. Um, so, you know, <laughs> as a young kid wanting to learn how to play, uh, not having, you know, the tunings and all that stuff, it, it was it was difficult, but, but just digging deep into everything. Now, to the actual MoFi itself, the, the, the one step. Like I said, this is my first ever one step. So excited to have it. Um, because I knew 
that it was going to sound amazing, obviously. I don't have a version of the 2012 uh, that LP, 2LP that came out on 33 RPM, I believe it was. I don't have a copy of it. Um, because, like I said, I, I already had the original German pressing. So I, I couldn't compare sounds or anything like that to the the 2012. Um, I could compare it to my original, but it's a little bit different because it's missing a track and um, and stuff like that. But what I will say, as great as my German pressing sounds, and it does sound great, this MoFi blows it out of the water. Um, now I've already heard some people say, honestly, the 2012 version is just as good, maybe even better. You know what? Okay, maybe. But I didn't buy this just for, you know, I bought this because I knew it was going to probably be one of the best sounding records that I, I ever heard. And it is. Um, you know, it's my first time with uh, um, Super Vinyl, I believe that is what it's called or something. Um, you know, it's my first time. Super, super quiet, you know, as can be. Nothing, no crackles, no pops, no, no anything. Super, super quiet. And then when I listen to it, um, like that, like when the actual music kicks in, and that first song he plays is an instrumental um, with that nylon string guitar, you could just hear every string flick. Just, and I'm not going to use technical terms because I don't know all the technical terms, but the clarity and the sound of of the pick hitting it and his fingernails because he does a lot of plucking as well. Um, you know, just the the sounds that the strings would make were so vibrant and so just clear. It was like I was hearing stuff I hadn't heard before. Like the way, like every string, not to say that there were any mess ups, but if there was one or if there was like, some, you know, like the string wasn't pressed down all the way or it was just, bare, you know, you could hear every little thing. I was like, wow, that is amazing. Um, you know, and then vocals. Uh, hearing some of the vocals uh you know super clear you could hear the background singers just on point um you know i was just so impressed with the sound and then uh chuck lavelle who plays piano on it which if you don't know who chuck lavelle is look him up he's been playing with the stones for years um but his piano just the clarity of that and then when they get the kazoos out in the, the harmonica you hear every little every little aspect of everything it's so amazing and like i said i've heard this record so many times and i know it so well and so to, to just hear the clarity and like hearing some uh like little drum beats that maybe i didn't hear before or the bass notes that weren't quite as as loud or not you know just faded back a little bit i could hear them um and i was just like oh my gosh this is like like i mean i Everyone says, like, listening to one of these is almost like you're in the room with them. I, I don't know about that because I've been to concerts and I've been to shows and watched people play. But to say that I, that they, it, it was so clear that I could hear every little instrument, every little tap, every little, you know, string, every you know, everything, it was just mind-boggling to me. And... You know, people have talked about how, oh, the picture's not the greatest on here, and there's not a, yeah, there's not a whole lot in here. I was hoping for maybe like a little bit more, um, you know, some more notes or something like that. It, it's pretty, it's pretty basic, um, you know, I mean, th th these are nice, you know, it helps protect everything. Um, you know, then it's got the, the one-step thing telling you how they make them, and then you get the, uh, this is pretty simple. I mean, honestly, all it is is the, uh, it's, this is what the back of it looks like. And when you open the, the actual gatefold record of the, of the OG or the, uh, or the newer ones, it looks just like this. So, I mean, there's nothing new added to this presentation. I will say, because again, this is the first time I've ever had one. These are, I think are really neat. Um, I will, I will say they're at times hard to pull out of the, uh, of the sleeves here, but you know, I mean, to me, I got what I paid for. I mean, I, I was, like I said, I was so excited about the entire thing. I could not wait to listen to it. And I've listened to it two times now. Um, and I'll probably listen to it again, maybe even later today, if not tomorrow. I, Like I said, 
when, when, when something's your favorite, you, you go out to get the best that you can of it. And to me, this is the best. I said, yeah, I know people are saying that the 2012 is great. I can't compare it to that. Maybe it is. But for me to say that I have this, it, you know, and, and, it, and it was my first MoFi, and I did, it probably won't be my last, but I'm not going to go out and buy every single one of them. I'm only going to buy the ones that I really want and really love. But this record, to me, is is special um, for a lot of different reasons. And I was, I'm was so excited to add this to my collection. Um, you know, it... The, the quality is good, so I know it's going to last a long time. Um, it's, I, I, I don't know what else I can say. Um, you know, uh, it's it's amazing. I, <laughs> you know, if if you think the 2012 version sounds just as good, if not better, cool, great. I hope you I hope you like it. I hope you love it. Um, you know, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think's better, what version you think is better. Um, you know, uh, I, I'd love to hear. Uh, if you have this and you think this, that is the best, let me know. If you think it's not the best, let me know. If you find, if you have a different version that you think is the best, let me know. Um, guys, I just want you to say, I, I just want to say that to me, this record is perfect. And I'm so glad that I bought this. And, uh... You know, I, I might one day buy the 2012 and actually do the compare. But for now, this is all I need. And I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I hope they do more Clapton one steps down the road, actually. Because uh, those I will buy. <laughs> but um, for now, I got this. And I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah. So, guys, uh, if you like the video, please like and comment. Uh, subscribe uh, you know again I'm trying to get this channel growing I'm trying to get it bigger uh, I want to see it succeed uh, right now things are moving slow which I kind of figured they would be but I hope to see things get going better um, and I hope to keep bringing you more videos of stuff that I like uh, and uh, do some more talking and maybe you guys will start talking too <laughs> but um, Go out and listen to this album, whether it's this version or a CD or a cassette tape or a stream. Just go out and listen to it because, guys, it's it's just an amazing record. Um, and I hope maybe something of some things of what I have said will make you go out and actually buy it, listen to it. Um, and if you do, let me know what you think. But until next time, uh, you guys have a great Memorial Day. Uh, and I hope you guys go out and find a lot of good music to listen to. Um, and uh, I hope you let me know about it. Thanks, and see you guys next time.